Good evening and welcome to the 53rd Annual Teacher of the Year Ceremony. This year's competition was open to the public school district and charter schools to submit their best and brightest teachers to see who will be Delaware's Teacher of the Year. Their qualifications, classroom instruction, and their message, if chosen National Teacher of the Year, have been reviewed by our distinguished panel of judges. Tonight, one of these individuals will be Delaware's 2017 representative for National Teacher of the Year. But first, let's take a few minutes to get to know each candidate. From the Appaquinimic School District, Olivia Suhanik. When I look at my students when I'm talking to them or I'm teaching them or they're doing an activity, and I look at them and they're looking and then all of a sudden they get this like, ding kind of moment and I'm like, wow, they, they get it or they're making a connection between a topic that I'm talking about and something that they, they, they've heard or they've seen and then I see the hand go up and they want to share with me, they want to tell me something that they learned. Um, a particular student who did something like that this year with that ding kind of moment um, wrote me a letter at the end, end of the year and told me how much teaching him this subject inspired him and how much he loved this, the subject now. And he just thanked me for being the teacher that I, that I am and the teacher that I was for him and the way that I taught him. And I felt like that is a real teachable moment too. It's one of those moments where I'm like, He's really getting it, you know? I'm making a difference. Mrs. Suhanik made me excited for school and learning for the first time in my life. No other teacher has ever done such wonders to my outlook on school. From the Brandywine School District, Wendy Turner. Growing up, I never thought I would be a teacher. Um, it never even crossed my mind. I wanted to be a business person. And as I got older and I became a mom, my whole um, thinking about what I wanted to do in life really shifted. And I was looking to do something a lot more meaningful. I felt like I wanted to um, have a role in a way that would impact the world around me. I loved interacting with children and I felt like I could really relate to them in a positive way. It was, it was strange almost how it hit me. I feel like teaching is very hard, very challenging, much harder than my previous uh, jobs and career. But my worst day in teaching is infinitely better than even good days in my old job, I have to say. And you know, when you have that, um, that human reward all around you, kids smiling, kids learning, kids um, getting through difficult circumstances, and you help them through that, and you can see where they end up going and um, who they uh, grow into and, and turn out to be, it's just um, an incredible feeling. Wendy has the ability to see the big picture and help her students achieve their dreams. She is a model of a teacher that we hope others will imitate. From the Christina School District, Kristen Roberts. My brother was diagnosed with a learning disability when he was in second grade. And I got to see firsthand the difficulties and the heartache that he went through when he was learning how to read. At times, he would put his head down and he would say, I can't do this and I won't try anymore. And they would tell him, yes, you can and you will. I asked him what made them so special to him and he said they were comforting when I felt defeated. They were always there for me throughout my entire educational career and they made me believe in myself. They made me who I am today. So looking at that situation, I wanted to be a teacher. I want to be that teacher that makes that great impact on a student's life Recently, I had a student ask me why I wanted to be a teacher. And I told her I wanted to be a teacher to help students who needed help with learning. They needed a little extra push, especially with reading. And she said to me, I love to read. It is so easy. And then she paused and she looked at me again and she said, well, it wasn't always easy, but because you helped me, Miss Roberts, now it's easy. And I turned to her and I said, and that's why I wanted to become a teacher. Ms. Roberts' excitement for learning is contagious. She approaches every task with a sense of positivity that makes her students and colleagues want to learn more. From the Colonial School District, Sarah Bateman. As a child, I was not always the smartest student in the class. Um, I realized early on that you know, I struggled and had to work a little bit harder than some of the other kids in my class. 
Um, I think that I became a hard worker because of that, but I also developed some confidence issues um, due to those struggles. Um, it wasn't until college um, with a couple of really great professors that I had at Wilmington University that I realized that I was born to be a teacher. Rita Pearson once said that every child deserves a champion. I could not believe that more with my whole heart and soul if I tried. When I get students in my class, each year I try really hard to be their champion, just like I would have wanted um, back when I was little. Um, and that's really why I became a teacher. I want to instill confidence in these children. Um, I want them to believe in themselves. Um, and I will believe in them until they finally believe in themselves, even if it takes us to the last day of school. It's so important to me to create those relationships with them and to get them to grow. What makes Mrs. Bateman shine among others is her love of each and every one of her students and her dedication to their education. From the Las Americas Aspira Academy Charter School, Emily Edmonds Eveland. Learning to read was difficult for me as a child. My fourth grade teacher found ways to identify my needs and my personal interests and it motivated me and helped me become a reader. I remember coming home and telling my parents, she's an angel. I knew from that experience that I wanted to become a teacher so that I could also make a positive impact in the early years of a child's life. Ironically, this year, I am a fourth grade teacher. I have made a personal commitment to continue my education, finding ways um, to personalize education for students and keeping their needs and interests at the center of the learning environment. I want all of my students to know that they are readers. My fourth grade teacher's legacy is the positive impact that she's had on my life. And more importantly, I'm here today because she made the difference in one student. Emily is frequently sought out by colleagues for instructional support and guidance as her teaching style is highly effective. From the Newcastle County Votex School District, Jermaine Williams. I mean, it started back in sophomore year. I really didn't have teacher in mind, but we had a summer camp in our school and our, my chef instructor, Nick Matola, always invited me to help out with this summer camp that taught middle schoolers. And that's when I first decided I really wanted to become a teacher. Uh, we taught a culinary summer camp, and during that summer camp, just the joy that the kids had on their face when they learned about the culinary skills, they were so excited at the end of the day and so excited to learn when they came back the next day and motivated to uh, just learn new skills in culinary arts. So I think that's really where I found my niche and I decided that I wanted to be a teacher and help excite kids and help change their lives. Mr. Williams is one of the many teachers I have had that have made such an impact on my life. If it weren't for him, I never would have found my passion. From the Red Clay Consolidated School District, Holly Golder. I think the two biggest things um, in my classroom is to have enthusiasm for your content and compassion for your students. I love everything that I teach. I love history. I take every opportunity I can to learn more about history. And I hope that I impart that on my students in both my history classes and my psychology classes. But the biggest thing is that I want them to have fun. And that's really important for them to not only learn the content, but also interact with it, understand the elements of it, and feel a part of it. At my school, students are really, really active outside the classroom, doing several different plays or um, dance recitals. So I tell them up front, if there's something going on that you need extra time, we need to have a conversation with one another. So if you need more time on something, that's okay. Just ask for that help, and I think not many students have taken me up on it, but at least they know that I care enough to ask and tell them, you know, that I'm here for you and if you need that, to come to me. My daughter's excitement, passion, her ability to challenge herself to the highest levels, and the overall love of learning that Ms. Golder has instilled in my daughter is invaluable. From the Cape Henlopen School District, Melissa Dawson. There are actually five people who've affected my teaching career the most. Their names are Kristen Mitchell, Dawn Dorman, Lisa Craig, Kim Cross, and Brenda Hazard. And these are all first grade teachers who are part of my team. I've worked with these teachers for the majority of my teaching career, 
and without a doubt, they have helped shape me into the teacher that I am today. About half of the teachers that I work with have been teaching for over 20 years. And even though they've taught for that many years and they've had ample experience, they still, every single day, strive to find new ways to help their students reach their highest potential. And so what I've learned from this team is the power of teamwork and also how important it is as a teacher to continually evolve. I feel extremely lucky every single day to work with these talented, smart teachers and they are my inspiration. They make me want to be a better teacher. Mrs. Dawson's ability to connect with her students and her talent at teaching are both truly superior. She creates a culture for learning and mutual respect in her classroom. From the Del Mar School District, Kristen Jones. My most memorable moment was this year with my seventh graders after they learned how to properly format a letter and print envelopes and they could pick whoever they wanted to uh, to write their letters to. So some of them wrote to celebrities, some wrote to McDonald's giving them new recipe ideas um, and, or their favorite company or where they shop. So um, once all the students got their work turned in, which everybody turned their work on in time, which was amazing, um, they, I, I mailed them, I took them to the post office and a few weeks later I didn't think anything about it but some of the students started getting letters back. Um, I think the one that kind of meant the most to me was my one student who was named after Michael Jordan wrote to him and he sent him back a signed letter and a picture and his parents framed it. And he was just so proud and he showed all of his teachers and it was really awesome. Mrs. Jones is a teacher that teaches by example. Her work ethic within the classroom and within the community is admirable. From the Indian River School District, Melissa Grice, I have to really go back to my teenage years and that's when I think about my time on the softball field and the person that impacted me the most was my softball coach. His name's Mark Brown. What I remember the most about the time with him is that he had this way of making all of us believe that we could achieve something together and he saw this greatness in us and he had these high expectations that I believed in. Like I wanted to play for him and I wanted to like rise to that occasion. I never had anyone in my life like that before that just automatically believed in you. And he had this saying, never be satisfied. And what he would instill in us is to make a goal. And then if we met that goal, you weren't supposed to just celebrate and be happy, but to think about your next goal. I now feel I'm a coach, but I'm no longer on a softball field. I proudly take my stance in the classroom and my players are now my students. And I hope that I'm truly motivating them and allowing them to see their full potential, like he did with me when I was 12 years old and not sure of myself. And when they leave my classroom, I hope they leave with the content and the knowledge I've given them, but more than anything, I hope they remember that feeling, the feeling that I was there for them and that I always believed in them. Melissa consistently showcases the knowledge, dedication, involvement, and inspiration that the district dreams of providing to all students. From the Laurel School District, Aaron Brennan. I had a student come up to me and he wanted to share a picture he had drawn. When I looked down, I noticed right away it was a picture of his mother. Above her head, he had placed a speech bubble and it said, miss my kids. When I looked closer at his picture, that's when I saw the three tears he had drawn streaming down her cheek and the bars he placed in front of her. I realized he had just shared something so precious and sacred to his own heart with me, and that was a picture he had drawn of his mother incarcerated. It was so memorable because he helped me realize on that day that I had created a classroom environment I always strive to have, and that is a place where students feel safe, they feel valued, and have self-worth. The only reason why he shared that picture with me on that day was because he felt like he had the confidence to do so and he could take that risk with me. But I feel what should be at the forefront of all educators' minds are developing those relationships with each individual student that walks through their classroom door. I'm proud and confident to say on that day with that student, today, tomorrow, and in the future, those positive relationships are visible in my classroom. Mrs. Brennan is a loving and enthusiastic educator that has created a learning environment in her classroom where students are free to explore and discover new concepts and skills. 
from the Seaford School District, Nikki Bean. Last school year, I had a student who came to me whose home life was anything but easy. When she arrived to school each day, I wanted my classroom to take her to a different place, a safe place and a loving and nurturing place. I saw in her a girl who had rarely heard a good word spoken about her, so I praised her and then I praised her some more. Each day I found a reason for her to feel valued and important. This could be as simple as counting the breakfast items and even the smallest accomplishments, such as starting her sentences with a capital letter. I saw a light in her eyes. She wanted to succeed. She wanted to do well. She just needed someone to believe that she could. My most memorable moment was calling her name for the AB honor roll for the last marking period during our award assembly. Calling her name in front of hundreds of students and parents and seeing the smile on her face will definitely have a special place in my heart. Not all students have the same tools necessary to reach his or her goals, and sometimes they need different tools, tools that are designed specifically just for them. So that while not all students have the same tools, each one has what he or she needs in order to be successful, and that's what teaching is all about. Nikki makes each student feel that they can succeed if they work hard and do their best. She empowers her students by encouraging them to have a say in the classroom dynamics. From the Sussex Technical School District, Vincent Colombo. When I look at my classroom, I also coach. And one of the best feelings in the world is when you actually coach a kid and then they end up being in your class because they take so many things away from what you do as a coach and in the classroom. It's almost like you have a leader in the classroom as well. They see you in that different aspect and they're able to approach you and other kids see that they're able to approach you as well. And it's so rewarding because you can sit there and you can talk to a kid and who may not fully understand who you are or what you're about, but they might be friends with the kid that is on my lacrosse team or wrestles and they're just all about it and they have no problems asking you questions. And then at the same time, when you're out on the sports field and a kid comes over to you on the sideline and explains something in relation to science, because that's what I teach, it's actually pretty cool. I had a kid tell me about kinetic energy on the sideline during the middle of a lacrosse game. That was pretty cool. Mr. Colombo is the rare teacher with the perfect balance of fun, learning, respect, and discipline within his class and within each student relationship. From the Woodbridge School District, James Weiler. So my teaching technique is twofold. It's uh, part content and part conduct. So the content is essentially a project-based uh, learning sort of John Dewey progressive education model where the students uh, are given a, a giant question, a guiding question, and they have to autonomously answer it and produce a product that reflects their learning. The conduct part, basically uh, I, I try to be human, so I accept my faults, uh, I, I certainly show my students, since I'm a writing teacher, the writing process. So I show, you know, just how uh, much of a struggle it is to write and draft and revise and all of that. I don't want to create this sort of superheroic persona that students might see and, and really often see in media. Because a teacher is, I mean, to get to where I am right now required a lot of struggle, it required a lot of grit. And if I'm to uh, you know, communicate and sort of extend those qualities to students, then it's also important that I show that I was once a student as well and I'm continuing to be a student and still uh, possess those qualities of success. James is a perfectionist when it comes to planning his brilliant and interactive lessons in his classroom. He is always looking for ways to improve his craft. From the Caesar Rodney School District, Melissa Rapp. My personal experiences in school really helped to shape my decision to become a teacher. I count myself very fortunate because I had teachers who were not only amazing at their craft, but also helped to create a sense of belonging in school for all their students. These teachers really helped me to find a place where I felt like I belonged. Um, for example, Mrs. Hillegas, my math teacher. Um, from the second that I walked into her classroom, I felt as though I belonged there. Her lessons were hands-on and fun and innovative, and they used technology during a time period where technology was still kind of new. Um, and as somebody who has never been good at math, I, I, I felt myself looking forward to that class more than any other one. Um, and I really kind of attribute that to her teaching pedagogy and the way that she was so welcoming and made all of her students feel as though they belonged there. I knew that I wanted to be an educator like these educators because 
I realized just through my experiences with them what a powerful impact um, a, a teacher can have in the lives of their students and their confidence and how they perceive themselves. Um, every child deserves a champion and I want to be that for my students. I want to be the teacher that helps them find meaning and value in school. Melissa knows her purpose as an educator. Everything that she does is an act of being selfless and is about putting her students first. From the Capital School District, Michelle Johnson. So my classroom is one of those places where um, if you have a colleague or somebody that you send your kids to when they are really having a difficult day, um, that's usually my room. So uh, I heard in the hallway one of my regulars, she was really having a tough time, and she comes in and, and I just kind of gave her a thumbs up. I know she's there and she's standing by the door. My kids are like really passionately engaged in this book. She was very quiet. She knows when she comes to my room, she has to be absolutely silent. Then you could feel her like creeping closer. And the more passionately we got into the book, I felt her sitting next to me. And then you could feel her body like lean in and she's pressed up next to me and she's listening and listening. And she says, do you have another book? And I reached over and I gave her the book and I showed her the page we were on. And after a few minutes, the principal came in and he said, sorry, but that was awful. You're gonna have to come, we're gonna have to call your mom. She looks at me and she says, can I come back next week? <laughs> and I said, yeah, but how about not this way? <laughs> like, so we developed like quite a close relationship and uh, she's a really precious girl. Mrs. Johnson isn't just your teacher for a minute. She is your teacher, mentor, and friend for life. From the Lake Forest School District, Heather Melvin. So in my classroom, the teachers and the students, we work together collaboratively. And I find myself oftentimes just a facilitator in the classroom, where I'm guiding the students as they work collaboratively in groups. And I find that as they are working in groups, they're enhancing their interpersonal skills with each other, and also they're learning to be critical thinkers and problem solvers, which is very key in, in the 21st century. And this works for me because the students are taking ownership over their own work. And each lesson that I plan, I make the decision, what is best for my students? I always ask myself, what is best for my students? What do they need right now? What are they going to need in order to be successful? And I found that as long as I'm answering those questions, as I'm planning and teaching, then I'm, I'm equipping my students with what they need in order to be successful in the classroom. Not only is she a devoted teacher who has served as grade level chair, Mrs. Melvin is an active participant and role model in her building and the rest of the district. From the Milford School District, Julie Hickman. My father is a retired New York City police officer and I had been telling him about some of the feelings my students thought towards police. Some of them wanted to be police officers and others felt a negative feeling towards police in general, I think because of news and media. But I had one student that came up to me and asked me if he could still be a police officer even though members of his family were in jail. I assured him that he could, but to kind of alleviate his fear. I called my father that day at lunch with that student and my dad told him that he can certainly be a police officer. My dad also decided to come in and do a presentation for my class and he invited a couple local police officers to come in with him. And little did I know what a profound effect that would have not only on my students but on our community. But something pretty prolific happened at the end. My father surveyed the class and asked who would risk their life for someone in this room. And immediately the officers put their hands up with pride. And some of my students smiled because they felt safe, I think. And others looked a little bit puzzled and one of my students actually shouted out, but you don't even know me. And my father said, you're right. I don't know you, but I love you. And a good officer would risk their lives to save yours. And I just think it's moments like that why I believe it's so important to have the community invested in the school and the school invested in the community. Mrs. Hickman's love of teaching is evident from her interactions with each student in her class. She has a special way of making learning fun for all students. 
From the Polytech School District, Dennis Haley. When I first started at Polytech, Polytech was my first high school teaching job. When I started teaching, my mentor was a gentleman by the name of Charlie Shinsky. And Charlie Shinsky had just an amazing, amazing uh, personality and way with the kids. And one of the things that he told me, and I'll never forget it, is you can be friendly, but you can't be their friends. You have to, you have to be firm, fair, and consistent, and you'll, you'll do well. I haven't always followed that very well because I really, I really like my kids. But, but for the most part, I always try and keep that balance so that I can, I can make sure that I'm getting my kids to where they need to be. Dennis brings an easygoing, quiet energy to his classes. He has an amazing instructional style that motivates his students to move further and dig deeper. From the Smyrna School District, Jennifer McCutcheon. Music has the power to influence and inspire children, and that is what I love about teaching music. Because I teach such large class sizes with a variety of different learning styles, I use a lot of different techniques and approaches to teaching music. I want my students to understand that music is more about, or not about notes and rhythms on a page. It's about science, it's about history, it's about math and foreign language. And I try to incorporate all these different techniques into my teaching each and every day. I often tell my students when I hand them a new piece of music that it's like taking a 500 piece puzzle and dumping it on the floor. And the goal is to piece each part together to create a masterpiece and we do this together as a team. Music is all about being creative and expressive and making connections to the world around you. Once they have made a connection, they can begin to add dynamics and tempos and all the other musical elements to clearly portray to the listener what they are trying to express or create through the music. The end product to me is that aha moment when the kids are, have made that emotional connection with the music and they are proud and excited about what they've just created through their music. Mrs. McCutcheon is a caring and supportive role model. Her rapport with the students is exceptional and the respect she gives to her students is reciprocated. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your 20 candidates for Delaware's Teacher of the Year.